Hey T Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, we are unveiling the sequel to Sunfire Ripple, last year's very, very popular aged white tea. This is Midsummer Light Show. So we have here a 2010 Fooding Shomei, so a 10 year old Shomei white tea from Fooding. Let's quickly scope it and then we'll talk about this front cover. So this is spring 2010. The cultivar is the Fooding Da Hao cultivar. If you don't know what that means or you want to find out more about white tea cultivars, then I'll put a link in the description below for everything you need to know about white teas. The origin of this is Fooding, the very famous place, one of the famous birthplaces of white tea in the world, Fooding in Fujian in China. The picking and processing, this is Shomei, so it's going to be medium to large leaves with a few little wispy buds you'll see in there as well. And the elevation on this is around 600 meters. So as I said, this is the sequel to Sunfire Ripple. You'll see the same character in Sunfire Ripple diving in the water with that beautiful sun behind it. Now he's staring up at the night sky. We'll talk a little bit more about the scene when we get into the tasting notes. I'm hoping that the tasting notes <clears throat> that we have shown in this drawing will still be there in the tasting notes of this tea. Obviously we last tasted this tea when it was still loose. It's now been pressed. This was about four or five months ago. So, you know, it's been a while and it's been steamed and pressed and, you know, so there's going to be some small changes to it, but I hope that the flavor notes will persist. So he's staring up at the night sky, you know, moonlit starry night, midsummer light show. Let's open this baby up and take a look. Very exciting. Always when I get to open another cake. Here we go. Ace white teas. Oh yeah, there she is. Lovely colors. Let's flip her over. Oh, where's the nefe? Ah, here's the nefe. That's right. We, we had it pressed before the artwork was done. So the nefe didn't slide in, but this is the nefe for it. Um, so it's been included. So Midsummer Light Show, here you go. That's the nefe and you can see the leaves here. Lovely color. Let's uh, get this pick out. Nice fine pick that we have, new in stock, this one. So darker wood here. So let's take a look at these leaves, chestnut, browns, slight orange notes to it as well. As I said, there are a few little white furry buds, but this is Shomei, so it's larger leaf picking. Now, some people preferred the Shomei, the Sunfire Ripple, compared to our Jade Star 4. Jade Star is a mix of Shomei and Mudan, which is more buds, younger leaves. Some people prefer Jade Star. It's all a matter of preference. I think that you can really tell that the Shomeis have tend to have a, a sweeter quality to it, a little bit more dessert-like in their quality, but have slightly less strength in terms of that sort of uh, tea drunk effect and that flavor profile, which is more of that Mudan, uh, slightly more buddy. It's, it's like a, it's a little bit fresher and a little bit more potent in its taste as well. But this is Shomei and yeah, lovely, lovely colors. Let's uh, see how this breaks up. Breaks up super easy as you can see with these larger leaves, it's gonna break up super easy. So I'm gonna take a nice chunk of this Shomei out. That should probably do. You know me, first time I taste a tea, I always want to make sure I get a nice, strong extraction. Very, very important that I get to taste everything about the tea um, so that we really can get a good flavor description here. And of course, effect as well. So that all goes inside here. And we're gonna quickly, very quickly wrap this up again. Here we go, let's try and wrap it up carefully so we can look at that front cover again. Here we go. Midsummer light show. Right. Now I have a very simple glass gongfu pot here. 
I always brew in guy ones, I realize that. So I thought I'd switch it up. Sometimes it's nice to change things up a little bit. Speaking of which, I have a new kettle as well. Kindly gifted to us from the good fellows at Fellow. So I'm testing out this kettle. Review will be incoming. Lovely, lovely looks on it. You, you can't deny that it's a very pretty pot. Um, so we're gonna heat up this teapot, pour it into our pig trough. It's always nice about Gong Fu Brewing. You can always switch up your teaware. I've got a nice cup and I've decided to be a bit sophisticated today and have a little cup holder. And we've got our Lotus Gong Dao Bay as well. So all new teaware in stock as well. Okay, so let's get these leaves in here. See how I did in terms of a guesstimate of how much leaf to put in. Right, so some people would stop around there, but I like to go a bit further. Okay, it was a little bit over ambitious, but not so over ambitious as you can see. That will, don't worry, that will be saved. It's all gonna go back into that wrapper. Right, now then, all important. So as I said, it's been about four to five months since we last tasted this tea, so it's always a special moment when we get to smell the leaves again for the first time. Hopefully, it is everything that we remembered and fell in love with. Okay. Warmer than I remember, but so lovely and warm. Um, almost got a sort of biscuity um, crumble. Uh, you know, the, the classic British dessert, those crumbles with that, uh, usually fruit. And I'm getting a lot of that as well. So I'm getting like berries, uh, cherries, berry cherry crumble. There is a slight deep leafy sweet note, like a sweet tobacco in there, but very, very light tobacco, not dark um, and, um, and deep, but lighter blonde tobacco. Sweet though, like a, a syrupy note to it. Date syrup, um, coconut sugars, date syrups, berry crumble, so buttery, biscuity, fruity, sweet, and then a lovely little bit of that blonde tobacco note. Right, let's give this a rinse. And see what the wet leaf smells like. Actually, I'll pour some in here, just warm everything up a little bit. Okay, here we go, wet leaf smell always so fundamentally important. I let it steam for a little bit more just to, just to bring up the aromas. I do like these uh, glass pots. It's been a while since I brewed in them, but they do allow a lot of aroma build up in there. Here we go. Ooh. Let me get my head around this a little bit. Lots going on. Lots going on. Mm. So it's, got that fruity pudding note to it as we had in the dry leaf. It's more moved into sort of a steamed pudding. We're in English dessert territory. So we move from crumble to steamed plum pudding. So spongy and steamed and warming and comforting with definite plums and cherries, just tons and tons of plum and cherry, those deep damson colored fruits. Very, very sweet, very, very summery. Midsummer's light show. Midsummer light show, we felt that this really represented a summer drink, same as Sunfire Ripple. If you remember, Sunfire Ripple was uh, the same character. We don't have a name for this character. Actually, if you want to suggest a character name for this 
I, I imagine him to be a sort of traveler that just is just immersing himself in in flavors and experiences around the world. So, you know, in Sunfire Ripple, he was diving in and it had a sort of summer holiday feel to it, that tea. This one, from my recollection, has a bit more of a sort of contemplative looking up at the night sky feel to it, but still deep in summertime. And I'm getting those fruits, like being in a, it's, it's like having steamed plum pudding. And then there's that herbal note that comes through, again, summer herbs like thyme and oregano. And um, yeah, like a little bit of dried, um, dried oregano, maybe a little bit of sage, thyme, uh, and I love that. I love the combination of fruits um, and sponge with some um, of those herbs. One of my favorite sort of cakes are like rosemary lemon drizzle cakes or thyme and plum steamed puddings. And this is just like thyme, oregano and plum steamed puddings. So we imagined this character in Romania, actually, because we got so much plum note um, to this. And we know that Romania is very famous for their plums and their prunes. And we have him sitting on a, a table that's been fashioned out of a large tree trunk. And around him is just full of these cakes, it's full of dessert-like quality. So sort of fruit tarts and fruit puddings. And also we've got a bit of this alcohol in here. And that is because it definitely has a sort of, because it's aged, it has that fermented alcoholic note, like a plum alcohol, like a, not really a plum wine, something stronger than it, like a, I hope I'm pronouncing it like tweaker, which is that Romanian plum, uh, I think it's Romanian plum, strong, hard liquor. And it definitely has that fermented note happening. Right, here we go. Let's fill this up. The temperature on this, 95, so absolutely perfect. You can brew sort of 95 to 99, so that's like 205 to 210, I think is very, very good for white tea, aged white tea. I'm gonna give it a nice, strong infusion. With Chaumets, they're more forgiving. You can brew fairly long. Look at the color of that liquor making my mouth water already. Let's put this to the side. I'm gonna put the filter down here too. Let's take a look at this liquor here. It's just straight up whiskey, whiskey gold, whiskey gold color. Lovely. Moving it around a little bit. It looks like it's got some nice viscosity as well. Lovely color. Here we go. Yeah, lovely color. Ooh, nice viscosity as well. Can you see how those bubbles just hanging about there on the surface? Beautiful viscosity. I feel very stylish drinking on a coaster. Very rare for me. Normally I'm spilling water everywhere and uh, making a bit of a mess. So a little bit more of a sophisticated session for this one. Sequel to Sunfire Ripple, this is Midsummer Light Show 2010, Fooding Chaumet. Cheers, everybody. <sighs> Texture is thick. Medium to thick, but yeah, very close to thick, and I would imagine that it's going to thicken up even more as the leaf starts to become more soaked with water and give us stronger extractions. But this is plenty strong. <sighs> Lovely, lovely, thick, viscous, smooth. Oh, it just goes down your throat. Very, very silky. Then comes back with a little bit of dryness, a tiny bit of grip, and then juicy sweetness already starting to develop in the mouth. And immediately I'm getting that alcoholic note that I was talking about, this sort of plum alcohols, but as I said, it's more in that uh, um, palinka, twika, those sort of Central European, Eastern European fruit liquors. Mmm, 
I'm getting a bit of um, that prune, in fact, quite a lot of that prune. I'm getting some marzipan, not as much as if there were, were buds, more buds in there, because those buds tend to contribute more to that marzipan uh, taste, but it's definitely there. Some of this nutty almond, sugared almonds, prune, there's a grain in there like a polenta, like a prune polenta cake with thyme and oregano. We're in that sort of Mediterranean, Central and Eastern European sort of uh, area of the world, you know. So we're getting those high mountain herbs like the oregano and the thyme. We're getting prunes and polenta. We're getting that alcoholic note. We're getting some um, wood in there. <sighs> It's got a, a little bit of a hobbit home-like sort of woody earthiness to it. In fact, when we were designing the cover of this uh, cake, we were thinking of, you know, trying to incorporate a little bit of that sort of mossy uh, hobbit home, hobbit world type sort of uh, imagery in there, but it's not strong enough there, but it's definitely there, it's a, a sort of, undergrowth note to it that is just sort of adding a little bit of interest and intrigue to the uh, the fruits and the, the desserts and the, this prune and, and plums and polenta and syrup and plum alcohol. So that foresty note, which is why, of course, this uh, character is sitting admiring the night sky in the middle of a forest. I like to think that he's the sort of last person. It's been a great party out in the forest, you know, and there's still cake and alcohol left over. And he's sort of just hung back, stayed late into the wee hours, early hours of the morning to watch the midsummer light show. Mmm. There is a spice as well, the sweet spice there as well, like a cinnamon coming through. So cinnamon, plum, thyme, polenta cake, and as I said, a little bit of that foresty note and those alcoholic notes. Look at that. Look at that little bubble, not going anywhere. Nice, thick texture. Mm. Let's uh, boost this kettle up. I'm still getting used to this stag kettle from Fellow. So far, impressions are pretty good, but I'll save that for the review. Right, let's brew this up nice and strong. Nice little bit of perspiration happening. Again, 97 degrees now, so a little bit hotter. You can pour direct onto these Chaumet leaves. You don't have to worry too much about sort of indirect brewing. These leaves are big. They can take quite intense extraction. Mm, taste in my mouth. The residual flavor is a very adult-like. It's still got that dessert-like quality, so I'm still picking up prunes and plums, but definitely I feel like I've taken a shot of a fruit alcohol, like a palinka. I just feel like there's this sort of warming, slightly um, slight alcoholic fermented note that's uh, persisting in the mouth and this sweet saliva that's being uh, um, that's being created and uh, yeah it just it reminds me of like a syrup like a, a date syrup or a, a coconut sugar syrup so not direct sugar but like again like a fruit sugar okay second infusion Let's see if it's stronger in color. As you can see, it is. So now we're more in that sort of orange, cooked sugar caramel tone. Mmm. Oh, creamy on the nose. Ooh, a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla sponge pudding, again, with cherries in there or plums, but very, very sweet, 
damson ruby plums. The smell is intoxicating. Take a look at the color, definitely darker for the second infusion. I'm not timing it, I'm just doing it by feel. But as I said, these teas are very, very forgiving teas. Color here is beautiful, beautiful color. Last cup of the first infusion, then we'll move on to what looks like a very potent infusion number two. And then we'll talk a little bit about the smell of the empty cup once I've finished this pitcherful. Cheers everybody, infusion number two. Let's see what the texture has done. Yeah, definitely thicker. Even with hotter water, which tends to sort of bring out a little bit more of the bracing quality of a tea, definitely, definitely thicker. Mmm. And just, I would say if you compared this, ooh, okay. I would say that, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. If you compared this to Sunfire Ripple, similar flavor profiles, but Sunfire Ripple was a, a little bit brighter and lighter. This definitely is late night. This is definitely, I'm getting this sort of cooling, minty cooling uh, feeling in my, uh, my breath, in my lungs. Again, like I've taken a shot of alcohol, you know, where you've got oof, this feeling like it's opened up your, um, your respiratory system a little bit. Very, very interesting. Yeah, when I breathe, I really can feel it. A very, very cooling sensation. Mmm. Oh, wow. Wow, intense. I don't remember that from the tasting of the loose tea, which is always interesting how a tea changes once it's been processed and pressed. But what I really notice is, wow, a very intense opening sensation in my lungs. Very, very cooling in my lungs. So I'm getting this sort of nice sort of sweat that's developing on uh, my skin, but very cooling, like it, almost exactly like you would imagine a very sort of warm, hot summer's day that's turned into night and you're just getting this sort of fresh night air in your lungs, but it's still, you're still, it's still very warm and you're getting that perspiration as you stare up at the night sky. Definitely active in my stomach. I feel like I want to burp. I'm not going to, but I feel like I want to burp that sort of, you know, it's, it's definitely moving. There's definitely energy in this tea. Maybe it's not as contemplative as I remembered from the, from the first time I tasted it as a loose tea. Definitely potent. It's rising, rising uh, energy, rising warmth, and then cooling in the breath. Mmm. Yeah, my little uh, alarm bells are going off that just take it easy with this one. You want to sort of settle into this one because it may have more of a tea drunk effect than I remember. Mm. Let's um, just to pause a little bit here. Let's smell the empty cup and see what we are getting. Ooh. Mmm. So I'm getting, again, this combination of fruits and jams and desserts, but now it's more in like raspberry, raspberry jam. And then the more adult side of it, I'm getting a distinct toasted, almost over toasted bread, mm, sourdough. So I'm getting that uh, very, artisanal bread smell, slightly sour from those, uh, from that wild sourdough starter. So very deep, dark toasted sourdough bread with raspberry jam spread over the top of it. Mmm. Very, very, very interesting combination of fruity and sweet and alcoholic and deep and dark and foresty. Right, I'm gonna pause now. I'm gonna drink a few infusions and then we'll come back and I'll let you know what this body sensation is. Wow, wow. This tea has actually 
really surprised me with its body sensation because when I tasted the sample, I remember feeling, yeah, this is nice, contemplative, relaxing. It, this is very, very different. And I'm not sure if it's because of the processing uh, into cakes or it's just the fact that I've been generous and given myself a, a nice big portion of this tea because I get small samples usually sent to me. The sensation on this is, I've been trying to work out how to um, describe it and worth bearing in mind that actually this is only one more infusion. So I have not been drinking for a long time, but it's strong enough that after just one more infusion, I can tell you that this, it doesn't have a sort of um, excitable, giggly feel to it. It is still very much in the sort of happy, chilled, contemplative, woozy, laid back vibe. Very, very warming. I mean, I really feel like this character. I really do feel like I'm sitting on a really hot, balmy night. You know that feeling in summertime when it's very balmy and it's, it's, it's almost too hot even in the evening and you, you're feeling this perspiration. I mean, this is making me flush, this tea. It's very, very warming and heating. So I'm feeling like I'm sitting on a very hot, balmy night and that sensation, that emotional sensation that comes with it, this feeling of sort of, whew, this is like, wow, you need to sort of breathe deep, you know, and again, you're getting that cooling sensation in your lungs, but very sort of, you know, you feel like you're taking in this experience, this hot summer's night where everything is just, you know, feeling a little bit woozy. Maybe you've had a couple of shots of whiskey or, you know, a couple of drinks, but it's got that sort of whiskey wooziness, that warming sensation sitting on a hot, balmy summer's night and just that feel good factor that comes with that summer evening. I mean, uh, I think that Celine has absolutely nailed the sensation on this. Probably, you know, when we were talking about it, we didn't think that it would uh, necessarily be so direct, but it really is a hot summer's night staring up into the night sky, just warm, warm, warm feeling, both physically, but also emotionally warm and happy, contemplative, but not in a, any kind of, um, you know, searching sort of way. It's just, you know, just taking it all in, taking life in. And um, wow, I love the sensation on this tea. I have to say this tea is one of those body sensations very, very deep in me, you know, deep and rising, warming, cooling, everything that I want. But overriding and most important is just a feeling of general contentment and happiness. And not just sort of calm happiness, but a sort of overwhelming feeling of happiness. Like, wow, take it all in. This is what life is about. Those hot, hot summer's evenings, um, summer nights, looking up at, at the night sky. I'm repeating myself, but it's just a, a really surprising and slightly overwhelming how, how good this tea is making me feel. Mm. Wow, um, uh, texture in the mouth is again, just nice, got a little bit of dryness, a little bit of grip. Again, similar to just drinking alcohol, you know, that feeling where it starts, has a slight stripping quality, but overall is still smooth. I'm gonna smell this empty Gongdao Bay. Oh, can't waste any drop, hold on one second. Mm. Whoa. Let's have a smith. Uh, I can't speak. Let's have a sniff of this empty Gongdao Bay. Definitely got a woozy feeling to it. Really surprising. I was not expecting this level of effect on this tea. I have to say, I was expecting a nice, calm, chill session. But if you load up your pot, I'm telling you, this is a, this is pretty potent and in a great, great way. Yeah, that 
toasted, deep toasted sourdough bread and raspberry or plum conserve. The look of those wet leaves. Wow, yeah, I did use quite a lot there. That's probably why I'm feeling it so strongly. Um, the look of the leaves, lovely sort of coffee bean or cocoa bean browns. Um, nice, it evens out generally. There's a, a few bits of green in there, but overall it's those sort of forest, deep browns, sort of mahoganies, chestnuts, and coffee beans and cocoa bean browns. Beautiful smell, still got that steamed pudding. A little bit of a spice though. Ooh, noting uh, just a tiny bit of, uh, of cinnamon and, and lots of that oregano and thyme. Plenty of thyme. Wow, uh, I am gonna stop after this one and just let this, this feeling settle in and then come back to infuse many, many more infusions out of it. I think I only had four infusions total. There's gonna be plenty more in here. And of course you can finish off with a really strong shot of the good stuff by boiling up these leaves. If you're not sure how to do that, then check out previous videos. I'll put a link in the description below and you can see how you can simmer these leaves to get the final shot out of it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful body sensation on this tea. Delicious, delicious, Midsummer Light Show, a worthy, worthy sequel to Sunfire Ripple. If you like Sunfire Ripple, I think you are gonna love this one. Midsummer Light Show, it's now available for you to get your hands on. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you are in the world by browsing maylift.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I am a slightly tea drunk Don from Mayleaf, thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff, and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. See ya.